People should not be walking around with masks. Let me just state for the record that masks are not theater. Wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better. And masks are protective. And we but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. There has not been any indication that putting a mask on and wearing a mask for a considerable period of time has any deleterious effects. There are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. And can you get some schmutz sort of staying inside there? Of course. I got kicked out of my kid's pediatrician's office because of the lies that man said. I also got kicked out of my office and suspended without pay because that man lied. From the future, subscribe to me if you want to live. We got the transcript from Fauci. Listen to this shite, guys. Representative Jim Jordan posted this. Question, do you recall reviewing any of the studies or data supporting masking for children? Fauci, I don't recall specifically. Question, have you followed any of these studies? Fauci, no. And he says, following up, I'm reading, but I believe that there's a lot of conflicting studies too that there are those that say, yes, there is an impact and those that say there is not. I still think that's up in the air. It's not up in the air, dude. The masks do not work at all. They don't, period. Like when the people were in Hawaii on fire, they said, hey, by the way, don't put your masks on because the smoke will go right through and you'll die. It's not going to protect you. Smoke is like a thousand times thicker of a particle than viruses. They admitted several times, several different ways that this whole thing was bullshit. And here you go. Here's the, here's what he said before and throughout. People should not be walking around with masks. Let me just state for the record that masks are not theater. Wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better. And masks are protective. And we, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. There has not been any indication that putting a mask on and wearing a mask for a considerable period of time has any deleterious effects. There are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. And can you get some schmutz sort of staying uh, uh, inside uh, uh, there? Of course. And, uh, you do not need to wear a mask indoors if in fact you've been vaccinated. But good that you're vaccinated, but in a situation where you have people indoors, particularly crowded, you should wear a mask. So even if you are vaccinated, you should wear a mask. And if in fact you are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, you are protected and you do not need to wear a mask outdoors or indoors. When the children go out into the community, you want them to continue to wear masks. You know, if you look at, at, at children outside, particularly when they're with the family, uh, walking down the street, playing a game or what have you, don't have to wear a mask. The, 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 the pediatric, the Academy of Pediatric, actually makes that recommendation that children should be wearing masks uh, from two years old onward. And you're asking now if your child is a member of your household, can you walk outdoors with your child without a mask? According to that chart, the answer is yes. But the child can't, not to beat it, yeah. beat it to death. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Because now okay. the CDC says, I mean, I think I've got this right. One mask is better than zero masks. Two masks is better than one mask. But you don't have to have double masks. Is, is that right? I mean, <laughs> you know, it became clear that cloth coverings that you didn't have to buy in a store that you could make yourself were adequate. And then you want it to fit better. So one of the ways you could do it, if you would like to, is put a cloth mask over, which actually here and here and here where you could get leakage in is much better contained. And are you a double masker, Dr. Fauci? Look like you are. <laughs> oh man. I got kicked out of my kid's pediatrician's office because of the lies that man said. Like I lost out on child health care because they were wanting me to mask my five and two year old for a well visit to like go to kindergarten. I had to go seek out other healthcare options that would tolerate my radical no masks on the two and four year old stance. 
I also got kicked out of my office and suspended without pay because that man lied and said that that was going on. I just got done having COVID for two weeks. I was weak. I was tired. I was cranky. Actually, here's the story. I don't, I haven't told the thought cast this. I don't think so. So I got COVID from somebody who was vaccinated, right? Of course. Then after two weeks of being super sick, like bad sick, I finally get over it and I go back to work for one day and I'm there one day. And then somebody says, Hey, can you quickly print whatever thing and do this paperwork for me? And then I'm out of printer ink. So I'm like, okay, dude, like it's my first day back. Everything's kind of horrible. I, I will get printer ink in the morning and then I will have this stuff filled out for you. And the guy I was helping out says, great. Well, I have a customer coming to pick up that paperwork at noon tomorrow. And I said, okay, whatever, that's fine. So the next morning I drive to Walmart right? To go get the ink. I spend $80 on the fucking ink, which is a travesty. Then I go out to the car. I go to start the car. It won't start. Why does it not start? The battery's dead. It was like a 14 year old car, 13 year old car. So it was just like time for a new battery and me being sick for two weeks. Apparently that was like the end of the battery reliably holding a charge. So I take the battery out. I'm still like weak and sick from being sick for two weeks, but I take the battery out. I go into Walmart to go get a battery and they're out of the battery. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me, bro. So I go back, I reinstall the battery. I jump off the battery with a jump kit that I have cause I'm prepared. And then I drive to a different place to get a new battery. I get that installed and then I drive to work with the printer ink and then I fill out the paperwork. So I get there sweaty, covered in grease, upset, horrible morning with the $80 ink that I paid for, which I'd have to fill out paperwork to expense later. And then I fill out the paperwork and I have to get it signed by the guy who like ran that place, right? Not my boss technically, but he was like generally the boss of the area. So I go take the paperwork to him to get it signed. And he says, I'm not signing that unless you put a mask on. I'm like, I literally just got back from being sick from COVID. And he was like, yeah, but you know, it's not safe. You could get some, that's why I want you to wear a mask. Cause everyone's sick. Cause of people like you, cause I didn't get the vaccine. And I'm like, I got sick from someone who was vaccinated. He's like, I don't care. You need to wear a mask. And I'm like, they don't work. They don't work. I, someone with natural immunity who just freshly got sick am safer than anyone else in this place literally. And he's, and he just started freaking out and telling me I, I need to do it. He wasn't filling my paperwork out for the customer that was about to be there in like 10 minutes, unless I put a mask on. And so I calmly and I calmly and collectively disputed all of the things that he said, said it was, it was absolutely not true that they didn't work against viruses at all, that I was already naturally immune this whole thing was ridiculous. And then that was it. He was like, yeah, well, you know, you, you have to do that or I'm not doing the paperwork. So I went back, I called my boss. My boss said, let me talk to HR. He called HR, then called me back like five minutes later and said, Hey, yeah, I talked to HR and they said that you have to wear a mask. And I said, okay. So then I sent an email to everyone in the entire company. And, uh, let me see if I could find it. I might actually have the email because I'm just, I'm so pissed off at Fauci. I feel like reading the email again said I should frame it. Yeah. Hang on. I think I have it over here. Cloud cam. I 
I found it. And I did the due diligence to not dox the company. Blacked out. Blacked out the stuff I was supposed to. Okay. So this is after that story. The guy kicks me out. My boss tells me that I need to just comply. And so then I send this email to the president of the company and I copy everyone in the company. And this got me suspended without pay and kicked out of the office for three weeks. This is September 9th, 2021, just so you guys know. So this is like after they rolled out the main lot of vaccines, told everyone that the vaccinated no longer need to wear masks, and then just started telling the vaccinated, you now have to wear masks again because of the unvaccinated, just so you're aware of the position. Okay, now. So I said, hello all, I've heard there is now a reinstatement of masking for employees at some of our locations. I just wanted to bring several things to the attention of the staff and leadership. We have an issue of informed consent and the company's perceived role in our medical decisions. Surgical masks were designed to stop large debris and bacteria from getting into wound channels during surgery. This debris and bacteria collects and becomes dangerous to the wearer after a few hours. At that point, these masks need to be discarded. These bacteria collecting in our cloth and surgical masks can cause staph infections, gum disease, cavities, strep throat, and bacterial infections, which could lead to pneumonia. The restriction of airflow causes hypercapnia, elevated CO2, which causes elevated heart and breath rate, dizziness, fatigue, depression, anxiety, and brain damage. The effectiveness of these masks stopping COVID-19 or any virus is debatable. The statistical data shows minimal, if any, benefit. For these reasons and others, I will not be putting my own health at risk. There is a cost-benefit ratio to every medical decision, and masking is not in the best interest of my health based on my personal medical conditions. I would appreciate if the company avoided breaking ADA laws for discrimination against employees based on their medical conditions. I am not here to tell anyone what to do. If people want to wear two masks, get three booster shots, and get a rectal swab every morning to be safe, please go for it. But I will be making any and all personal medical decisions for myself without the influence slash opinions of my employer. You are more than welcome to make any recommendations for all employees and customers. You cannot, however, enforce blanket medical policy over individuals with no regard to their individual health. It is medical discrimination, and it is very illegal. I am not going to negotiate my health with the company. The company has no say or authority over my body and medical choices. I have been here for seven years. There are massive parts and labor shortages everywhere. I would hope my continued service is worth the company's consideration of the law and my medical rights. So, yeah, I sent that, and then I went home, and then I got a call. You're suspended. They said, we're going to do a call tomorrow with my boss and my boss's boss to discuss my punishment. And yeah, so I was suspended uh, without pay and then kicked out of the office, basically saying, as long as I won't wear a mask, they won't let me in the building. And uh, what happened was uh, just about everyone in the company, they said, we're not wearing masks anymore. So they got my email. They saw I was kicked out and they said, yeah, fuck this. And they all took their masks off. And then email after email came in while I was at home and the emails were begging people to comply with the masks, begging people and people wouldn't budge. They wouldn't do it. And I had people on the inside that were telling me, oh yeah, no, like your email has been printed out by the shop guys, by the, <laughs> by the, sh the shipping guys, it's hanging up on the walls. Like people are pissed and livid and no one is complying. And guess what? Three weeks later, I get the email. Thank you guys so much for uh, your cooperation. The, the masking mandate for the company has been lifted. So now, you know, it's just an option if you want to do that or not. And then I get a call. Yeah, you can come back tomorrow. And then the leadership just tried to act like nothing happened. And all the people there were thrilled. You know, they were thrilled. So they were excited that it got changed. They're excited to have me back. And, you know, things were never really the same for me at the company until I left because the Biden economy ran away so hard 
and the part shortages and sales shortages and everything, it was like I, I couldn't afford life. So I had to actually leave for uh, a number of reasons, but it was pretty, pretty stupid. Get in McGroin says, love the rectal swab part. Yeah, that was my favorite part. My boss was quite upset about that. He was like, I agreed with a lot of what you said, but like, did you have to put the rest rectal swab thing in there? And I was like, oh yes, I did. I absolutely did. Dagnar says, I simply told them I couldn't wear a mask. I have lung damage from a chemical fire in my time over in Iraq. I mean, that's the thing is like, for me, I'm claustrophobic. I'm like a big dude and I don't like tight spaces. And so for whatever reason, when I wear a mask, it, triggers all the same symptoms of me being like stuffed in a coffin. I get like lightheaded and queasy and felt like I was going to faint. I almost fainted just walking around. I like had everything start to go black and I caught myself on a shelf. And then I was like, I think it's these stupid masks. And then I did the research into what was going on and how they worked. And I discovered that they don't work, that they could hurt you. You know, that it's just a giant scam. And that's like one of the things that led me into to doing all of this. Like I, I, when I got suspended, I started building the wall for this studio. Like that's what I was doing when they kicked me out of the stu out of the, my job. Paris says, and you're in a walk-in closet. Yeah, I know it's freaking tight in here. Like it looks kind of okay with this shot, but like it gets really tight and uncomfortable, but it's just the best I got to work with. Huddle says started a revolt there. Yes. And we won. We won. That was my first revolution. Write that as a children's book. First revolution. Fatty says been in a few coffins, have we? Oh, you know, oh, I don't like it, man. I don't like the, I don't like the tightness. No, thank you. Need some, some space. I mean, you guys can see like, you're just like, how tight is it? <laughs> I'm almost to both sides of the studio. <laughs> okay. Like it's uh, that's, that's there. So I'm not, this is like storage closet doorway touching other clock, the other door to leave touched. I just touch, touch, touch. That's the whole thing. Okay. Wheatley, how dare you? How dare you bring, bring something like that in here? We're all behaving in here. We're behaving. Goodness gracious. I can't bring you guys anywhere. She said, am I wrong? I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going there. All right, but I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go. If you enjoyed this clip from the ThoughtCast, please like, subscribe, comment what you think, and catch us live on Rumble, 4 p.m. Eastern time, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All links down below.